day three, and we're back with more. Uh, it was a it was a long day, so it's uh, it's almost ten o'clock at night. And we're gonna film this and edit this. Hey everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent, and this video is day three of my 30 day world building challenge thing. Uh, and so a lot of people are jumping on board and they're doing it with us. So check out the hashtag, uh, my 30 day world. Uh, lots of people are doing really cool stuff all over. Uh, some YouTubers, some bloggers, some people on Instagram. So search it and you can see really cool things. It's like awesome. Uh, my, my phone is clicking because people are talking to me. Um, in, the, in the world of Jordan news, before we start, I just finished uh, my Rod of Seven Parts game, which was really fun. And how often do you actually like end campaigns? Like so many campaigns kind of fizzle out. So this was fun. We started it back in March of 2020, February of 2020, I think actually was the first day, the end of February. And we've been playing all the way and, and I promised them a 10 to 11 month campaign. And here we are December 1st or December 2nd and we finished it. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. So if you're curious about that, uh, good friend Ted Nerdimersion, Ted uh, has all of the, the episodes of that archived. So if you wanna see how I DM, I'm not the best, but sometimes you just need to know that there's regular average Joe DMs out there. And so it's kind of fun to hear just regular people play D&D. With that, Let's jump over to the, the notion and uh, we'll, we'll discuss uh, yesterday's and today's. So let's go. Um, still working on some of our stuff, but if we dive over here to notion, um, and to be clear, some of you guys uh, were like, hey, we wanna have access to this to kind of see the stuff that you're working on. Um, one, I'm gonna say that a lot of this is just my thoughts and so it's not in a, it's not as organized as it looks, I don't think. Uh, Notion definitely helps me organize it. But uh, I need to pay for Notion um, in order to invite people to view it, uh, which is not a lot of money. I think it's like $4 a month, so it's completely reasonable. Um, but what I think I'm gonna do is, uh, and is, well, Twofold. One, I think it costs money. Two, I th well, I think there's a free version, but I don't necessarily just want to like publicly put all this out on the internet. I would much rather be able to control where it goes a little bit. So if you are interested in all of this stuff that I've put together, um, minus uh, some of these uh, world building resources, which I have uh, some PDFs and stuff in here that I can't just give away. Um, and because I bought them and things like that. So stuff like this, I'm gonna have to delete, um, but I will put a link of all the interesting stuff that's in here. Um, but if you guys are interested in this, I think I will open it up to patrons. So tomorrow, uh, maybe before this video goes live, I will uh, figure this out and I'll have some kind of a link maybe that you can join. Um, if you go to patreon.com slash Jordan with a PH in the middle, uh, I'll put up a public link that says that it is a go. Um, and so if you are a new patron and you want to subscribe to me, um, it's as little as a dollar. It will get you access to this and you can see a lot of the notes that I'm taking um, for all the various things. Uh, I hope that's okay. Um, I, I, I'm not a big fan of paywalls and I'm not trying to do that. But at the same time, I think that's the best way to not just let everybody have access. Like if I, if I put the hurdle here, then only the, the people that are really interested uh, kind of makes more sense than just letting everybody see everything. Uh, and if you don't wanna pay, then just wait because by the end of this 30 day challenge, I will have talked about most of everything that I have pre-written uh, and, and you'll have a better grasp of it. It's, you're just gonna have to wait. So diving in to 30 day world building challenge. Um, today, well, first of all, let's talk about the physical planet. Again, I, I feel like I didn't do this correct, but I don't think that there's a wrong way to do it. The, the wrong way is just not doing it. So I did heavy rainfall, blizzards, thunderstorms, blah, 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 dense fog. Um, and I talked a lot about this where dense fog to me has like mystery, like what's over there. So as I was writing this down, I thought of things that I want pot potentially in my world. 
Um, so with heavy rainfall, uh, travel is difficult. We talked about that. Uh, blizzards is slow travel. Maybe you're trapped. Um, thunderstorms, like lightning strikes the ground randomly in this area. Uh, kind of like a Final Fantasy X callback. Dense fog. Uh, mystery. We don't, why is there a persistent fog in the middle of the ocean? Um, sandstorms in the east really makes me think uh, claustrophobic. Uh, autumn and winter make me think of death. Uh, ominous, the closing of the world, the, the, the thing like that. And that got me thinking that what if in my world, one day a year, the world is in complete darkness? The way the, the rotation of the planets and sun and stuff line up, what if one day a year, the entire planet is just in darkness? Maybe that's an eclipse. I'm not really sure. I haven't figured it out yet. Spring and summer, I wanted the other side. Maybe there's a day where the whole world is illuminated for a day, like 24 hours of sunlight. Um, humid juggle made me think of exhaustion, draining, very gloomy. Uh, and barren landscape made me think that as gloomy, ominous, melancholy, uh, dark trees, like dense forests, made me think of oppression and caged. So then I was like, what is a mood? Like, I should just Google that. So I opened this up. Um, I did some Googling. And this is just like mood definition. Like, what is all? And so I, going through here and looking at the moods was a lot better for me to pick, like, what biome makes me think of mysterious or, or things like that. So I, I like this. Um, and then this helped me out. This is an unrelated page, but I just I did some Googling. It was kind of fun. Uh, and then mood examples down here. Mood in Hamlet. Like, Hamlet is a play about death, grief, madness, lots of different things in Hamlet. Um, but they, the first scene takes place at night with guards seeing a uh, ghost. And they're allowed to set the, not allowed, but they set the stage with, like, it's creepy and ominous. Uh, ominous. We don't have, you know, like, hey... It's a, it's a picnic in the springtime next to the water. Everyone's having fun. Oh, a ghost, that, what? Like they, kind of a bad example, but they make it creepy. Um, setting it up. Uh, a better one is Alice in Wonderland. It is whimsical, lighthearted, uh, in a cheerful mood. And it, and it is very like curious, like what's on the other side. And so that is a, but that's not necessarily weather, but like that is a, um, environment reflecting the uh, the mood that you want to establish. So there's that. Now we're going to jump over to uh, mood and setting. So if we click this, uh, day three, mood and setting. Um, as you've probably noticed already, a lot of my exercises aren't just about building a realistic world. They're about building a world that you can tell a story in. After all, world building is fun, but if you're doing these exercises, you're probably not interested in spending 2,000 hours world building without any practical application to your story, right? Haha, -ha, my players will help me make the story. Um, so pull out of your climate lists from Saturday and look them over, which was yesterday. Uh, you should have a bunch of climates, maybe even places, and a world or two describing how you feel when you're there. A word or two, sorry. Uh, well, it's time to make your first real decision about your novel cough. Uh, tabletop RPG campaign setting. What kind of mood do you want it to have? So you're going to set your uh, tabletop RPG in the kind of climate that contributes to the overall mood and theme. The mood of a novel is how it feels to read it. High fantasy is traditionally set in a climate similar to Europe or England, thanks to the father of heroic fantasy, J.R.R. Tolkien himself. However, it doesn't have to be that way. You can uh, capture a completely different feeling in a Middle Eastern desert setting or a Russia-like tundra. For theme, you can adapt your setting to what's actually happening in the novel, what kind of message your novel has to tell. For example, if you want everyone in the novel to be in a constant state of uncertainty, maybe you should set them in a uh, seismically active volcanic region. I like that. Um, or perhaps you want your story to feel very escapist. Nothing says escape like a tropical island with balmy days, uh, mid-afternoon storms, lush green plants, and climate, and things like that. If you already know, I want to write something dark and gothic, and you look at your climate list and there's dark or gothic, you're there. Uh, you've got your predominant climate, um, things like that. Uh, if you're thinking right now, I have no idea what kind of mood I want, um, yeah then let's do this, it's gonna take us 10 minutes. 
Read over your list from day one and then turn to a blank piece of paper, close your eyes and think about what kind of feeling you like to have when you read or write. Write down four words that fit into that feeling, two adjectives, a verb and a noun. So I know what I wanna do with this. I don't necessarily need to do, uh, oh, and I'm blocking it again, sorry. I don't necessarily need to do, uh, I'm still blocking it. Jordan, gotta move me over here. Um, if I spend 10 minutes, uh, this is to come up with like, what do I wanna do? So like, assume that I just don't have um, any idea. But I, I kind of do, because I've been working on this for a while. So this, I don't want to say it's a, it's a, it's not a cop out, but I'm, I'm going to gloss over this and we're going to talk about the mood that I like and that I want to accomplish. So mood and setting. One weather effect that we didn't really talk about, um, or like biome is like a city. And if I go back to uh, this uh, heavy rainfall, so what, what are the, some of the things? I have mystery, claustrophobic, death, exhaustion, gloomy, oppression. Um, I'm going to use oppression. Like, I like that. I like that I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling oppressed. I'm feeling uh, trapped, um, uncertain, lost. These are not, heroic things to talk about, but I feel like they're heroic things to overcome. Sorry, they're not heroic characteristics for my player characters, but are there something to overcome? Uh, I want to have a floating uh, tetrahedron, a floating pyramid, uh, inverted, so the point is down, um, looks kind of like this or this, which is why I have this art and why I have this uh, logo. And so if I have that, there's going to be the people in charge are up in that tower or that pyramid, and they are controlling the lower people. Kind of like, uh, uh, I mean, the, the Netherese did this in Forgotten Realms where they had floating cities, um, but, and it was like the aristocrats that were up high and the lower Netherese that didn't have enough money or magic to really go and live on the floating cities. Not necessarily going to be like that, but I... I like the idea that they have to look up and see, you know, there's there's my captor, there's my oppression. Like, I could go and make something of myself, but they're taking all my taxes or, or something like that, if that makes sense. So, uh, if that makes sense. So we're going to say um, inverted pyramid uh, city, uh, dungeon, I'm not sure yet. Um that lords over the common folk in a region. Uh, and I was talking with some patrons on our Discord, uh, but we were talking about like, hey, like what's your intention with this? And I was like, I, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of making a Kickstarter at some point. And he was just saying that, you know, there's not a lot of, like this is good for Jordan but there's not a lot of drive to buy other people's campaign settings because you kind of want to make your own. And then it's a hard sell without like me having a, an interest in it already. So I want to play in Lord of the Rings, but it's because I read the Lord of the Rings. Nobody wants to play in Endegar because they don't know anything about it. And in order to know things about it, they have to buy it. But like, I don't want to, why would I take a, a risk with that kind of a thing? So it's a lot better to be like, here's, the lore, here's the world, but I'm gonna give you this sliver of it that you could use in your campaign setting, but if you want more, then there's other stuff. So I think that's a good place to start with this inverted pyramid. I can create this city or this dungeon and anybody could use that, but it also kind of sheds light on a, on a larger world. And that's what I hope to capture of this kind of like tyrannical leader. So that gets us into uh, who is the most nefarious villain in your world? And that is uh, 30 days of world building. Who is the most nefarious villain in your world? If we go back to my campaign setting, I actually have a thing called villains. Um, and if we click here, here is the database of villains that I have so far. Now, these four creatures um, are known as the four. 
And I liked the idea of, I was talking earlier about how humans would grab, gr humans would gravitate towards magical power that was easy to obtain. So a human to become a warlock, simple answer. Um, whereas other races like dwell elves or dwarves or, or things like that, uh, they might be like, well, I live such a long time. It's fine for me to be a wizard because I'll do this or, or I'm going to devote myself to a God or things like that. Um, but for a human, if I, if I want to have power over somebody else, if I want to have, uh, if I want a flying, uh, tetrahedron city that will, a, you know, take over the world and I can utilize the resources I need and things like that. Um, those are also the same kind of people that will become warlocks. And so that's where I was going with this. Now, this is not my art. Um, I don't take credit for it. Uh, and I, I should find out the original artist. I feel bad. Uh, but they're, they're very good. Um, so to answer the question, which uh, now I need to go back and look at the question. Um, who is the most nefarious villain in your world? If we're starting with this tetrahedron, then the nefarious villain is going to be uh, Demitica Vin Vinicius. Uh, goes by the Venerated, a self-chosen name, expecting her subjects to regard her with great respect or revere. Uh, she has made a pact with Asmodeus for magical powers. She lives in and controls the Floating Fortress, which is the tetrahedron that we talked about. Subjects below provide food, items, and enchantments for her and her army. She's building up power to take out another Pact Keeper on Endegar. Now, Pact Keeper is an old word for the Quadrivium, basically. Or the Quadrivium is like th those who worship the four, um, which are these four here. But uh, Pact Keepers are ones that have made magical pacts with otherworldly beings. Um, and then there's just some dope art. It's really cool. Like, I love it. This is just the coolest Eveling. I thought it was really awesome. So she's going to be um, our villain. So if we go back to our question, who is the most nefarious villain in your world? Well, that's uh, Dominica. And she is using magical life force of people to create magic items. And I think that's part of it. So if you're obsessed with power, how do you get more power? Magic items. I like the idea that magic items uh, were created at a sacrifice. The mood and setting, we're going to be oppression trapped, uncertain and lost. And we're going to talk more about this inverted pyramid dungeon thing, the tetrahedron. And our most nefarious villain in our world so far is Demitica. I think as a... As a campaign setting, maybe Dominica is like the stage one boss and, you know, Medea is the stage two boss. And, and then all of a sudden we get all the way up to the, the king in yellow and he's our he's our uh, he's our final boss. So um, I don't know. We're not. We'll see. Uh, hello, everybody. That is day three. Thank you guys for uh, checking out the video. Um, and like I said earlier, if you are interested in actually perusing a lot of that uh, Notion database, uh, create an account at Notion.so. Um, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Jordan with a PH in the middle. And um, I'll, I'll see about subscribing to Notion so that I can add people to the project. And then I think doing that you'll be able to view it and uh, and and, it, and not make changes, but maybe make comments and be like, oh, I like this or, or things like that. We can, ha we can do something interesting like that. But for right now, I wanna leave it in a Patreon only state. Thank you guys again for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the rest of the month and I will uh, catch you tomorrow. So thanks everybody. <laughs>